All right, mofos, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use variables and also data binding. So in other words, I'm gonna show you guys how to have variables inside this class and we can include them inside our template. And by the way, just to give you guys a little heads up, since we kind of need to be making some kind of sample for this tutorial, I'm just gonna make a basic video player application and it's just gonna have YouTube videos. So we're gonna have a list of YouTube videos on the right hand side kind of like a playlist and whenever you click one it's going to display on the left so a really you know simple component but we'll learn a bunch of cool stuff about angular so the first thing i want to do is instead of just having plain old static text in here i actually want to change this up sometimes so what i'm going to do is in my class i'm going to make it a variable and you can name this variable anything you want i'm just going to name my main heading now I'm going to set this equal to something like my videos, semicolon at the end, and boom, look at that. So right now our class is no longer empty, it's happy, it has this main heading variable. But now we have to think, all right, how do we include this variable right here so it displays? Well, in order to do that, we use a concept called data binding. In other words, we want to include something from our class inside our template so the syntax for this is double squigglies so two left squigglies and two right squigglies i am positive that that's not the techo technical name for them but curly braces whatever so inside here you just write whatever variable so main heading and check it out so now let me go ahead and look at that my videos so again, that's the very basics of data binding. In other words, including class variables inside your template. Now, just a heads up, there are a lot of different kinds of binding in Angular. So if you're looking through the documentation and you're like, wait a minute, I'm looking at two-way binding and the syntax is a little bit different. We're gonna talk about how you can bind things differently later on. It's pretty simple, but we'll get to that later. For now, I wanna mention this. The number one rule, at least my number one rule of software design is never repeat yourself. If you are ever making an application or a piece of software and you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, then you're doing it wrong. So a lot of the times, especially when you're making a website, you have certain bits of code that you include over and over and over again. For example, the title of your webpage. Now on my website, I have the new Boston in almost every single title. So instead of just writing it, on every single file and then what if my website changed I would have to go through and do it again instead what I did is I made this one settings file and it has a setting for the title now if I ever wanted to update that I would only have to update it in one location and it'll update through my entire program now I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in this and since we don't have really any important settings right now I'm just gonna do it with the heading but later on let's say that you're working with like the twitter api and they gave you an api key that you needed to use all over or maybe like a file path then you would have that in your settings file but for right now we'll just put something stupid in here like this right there so we're going to actually make a new file and go ahead and name it config.service.ts so all of your typescript files are going to name or excuse me end in the ts file extension and for here we're just going to export a class in we're just going to have variables in here so export class and I'm just going to name it config basically your configuration settings or the overall settings for your website so this is going to be a variable called main heading you can actually name it whatever you want and since this is going to be a constant in other words it's not going to change before it use the keyword static so this means that this isn't just a normal variable, this is going to be a constant, in other words, a static, not changing. So whenever you're using TypeScript, after you make your variable, you have a colon, and then you write what type it is. So this is just a string, it's just gonna have some text in it, it's not a number or anything like that. And now you just set it equal to anything, just like a regular JavaScript variable. And just so I can show you guys that it's different, let me change this, I'll put like my, favorite videos all right so that's it so now whenever we include this in other files we're pretty much just taking all the variables in here and we can use it somewhere else so pop back over to app.components.ts and now we actually need to import this file 
So again, import, what is the class name? It was just config, this name right here. And now we need to say what file it's coming from. So remember, anytime we include one of our files, we have to use the relative path, so dot forward, and that is just config.service. So config.service. Now remember, don't add the file extension, and I explained in the last video why you don't. So now what we can do, instead of just setting this equal to some chunk of text right here, we can actually use the variables from this file. So the variable is named main heading. So just write config main heading. Pretty awesome, eh? So now if I look back here, my favorite videos, check it out. So this is pretty cool because again, not very useful in this example, but later on, if we included this all over, we would only have to go back here to this one file and change the value of this variable right here, and it would be updated in every single component where we had this main heading. Pretty awesome, eh?